stuff. Uh, as you know, we've been doing uh, a series called Tough Questions of the Christian Faith. And so two weeks ago, we began to talk about evidence um, for the Bible and its, its uh, reliability. We spent some time on that. And then last week, we began to uh, kind of talk about uh, how science and the Bible uh, relate to one another. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Uh, the whole series that we've been talking about comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. So if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there with me. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And I don't think this is on the screen, but uh, I just want to read it to you again. The Apostle Peter says this, But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Okay? But do this with gentleness and respect. Peter says that it's our obligation as Christians to know why we believe what we believe. That it's not enough to just have some ideas of what we believe, but to actually have some concrete understandings of why we believe these things. Because you know what? We're putting our whole eternity on what we believe. Our whole eternity rests on what we believe. And so if we're misguided or if we're following blindly something, we need to be asking some tough questions. We need to be sure of what we believe. And so Peter says we need to have an answer for people who ask us. Um, i got to tell you this story starting off this morning because it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks this week. I sat down in my office to do my prayer time. Uh, I think it was Thursday morning. And before I got to praying, my cell phone rang, and I, I'm starting to make a practice of just not answering my cell phone at all for like that first hour so that I can just focus on the Lord. But I hadn't started praying yet, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll answer it. I looked at the number, and it, it didn't look familiar to me at all. And so I said, hello. And this person, this, this lady just starts rattling stuff off. She says that uh, uh, she's from Virginia, and that she... And, and then she says, and then she just rattles this stuff off. And did you know that God's word says? Bah, 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 she just starts talking. And I'm like, wait a minute. You didn't ask me if you could talk to me. I don't know your name. And you're just 100 miles an hour talking. And so uh, she continues to, to say things. And, and, and then she'll say, she said things like, um, talking about the end of the world and the scriptures say this and she was write this down you got to write this she was telling me to write this down and, and to write down these scriptures so I could look them up later and she says the King James Version says you know and, and so I, I'm just listening and, and pretty soon um, she says something that, that is a pretty big red flag I mean so far you know I know that she's from Virginia, which isn't necessarily a red flag, okay? I have a child born in West Virginia, so I can't go there. And then, and then the second red flag was that she's only using the King James Version, which I'm not against the King James Version, but I, I, I do think that if you find someone who's saying the King James Version is the only version, the only valid version, then that could be another red flag. But this was a big red flag that her, you know, she says, God told her husband... God came to her husband and told her husband that there were certain prophecies and things that were about to come true. And so it was their obligation to begin to tell other pastors to give them the information about this revelation that God had given uh, her husband. And she kept, you know, talking about America this and America that and God's wrath is coming. And, and I interrupted her at one point. And the first thing I said was, how'd you get my number? I mean, I didn't want to argue theological terms. I just want to know, why are you bugging me on the phone, okay? I got stuff to do. And, and she says, well, uh, we looked up your name in the advocate or something. I don't know. Joyce is up my name in with the sermon title. So, she, you know, they must have looked up my name with the advocate and found some. Is my cell phone number in there, too? Okay. <laughs> Joyce does that, so it's all your fault, Joyce. And so, she's, you know, she says she... She used to live up here and she subscribed to the African. Well, fine. And did you know God said, bah, 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 and then she just started off again, I mean, on this run. And I'm sitting there listening and listening, listening. I'm thinking, you know, she's not talking to me. She's talking at me. She doesn't want to have a conversation. She just wants to download in massive format all that she can possibly say before I hang up. And so 
you know, she's talking and talking, and I say, no, wait a minute, can I, can I ask a question? And I have to really interrupt her to get her to let me say anything. I said, don't you think that this, I said, aren't you say, are, are you saying that you're interpreting everything that God does based on what's happening in America? I said, isn't that a very Western-centric view of, of God and the world and Scripture? And she's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, are you saying that America is so important that whatever happens in America determines what God's going to do to the whole world? Is it really like that? Is that what you think? Well, yes, sir, but, you know, God's wrath is coming, and the Bible says, blah, 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 and then she starts off again. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I, I'm thinking, did you take your meds this morning? You know, what's going on? Why are you calling me? And so, eventually, I interrupt her one last time, and I say, what's your name? And she says, my name's Barb. And I said, I took a deep breath. Okay. Well, Barb... And then she just started, and did you know, the Bible says, bar, 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 and she started talking again, Barb, 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 and she would not shut up. And so I shut the phone and set it down beside me and got out my notepad and started doing my devotions. And the phone rang. It was her number again on my screen. So I turned my phone off. And when I got done with my first time, I turned my phone back on. I had five messages from Psycho Bar. <laughs> she was continuing to try to get her message across on my voicemail, and I was really tempted to pull this out. In fact, I tested it on my Sunday school class. They said, probably not. But I have these messages still on my phone, and, and you know, if you ever want to really get a scary feeling in your gut, just call me. I'll let you listen to one of these. It's really creepy. And, and you know, I, I actually thought about putting her name and her, and her number on the screen. Well, it was just like a barb to me. But I was putting her name and her number on the, I was going to put her name and her number on the screen. I was going to say, everybody tonight, just call Psycho Barb and tell her, you know, Pastor Brian sacrificed a chicken last night and God said everything's going to be okay. <laughs> like, why are you calling me? And as I listen to more of her messages, she's saying stuff like, my husband, who God came to, can come to your church and tell you what God said. I'm thinking, oh no. <laughs> There'll be none of that. <laughs> you know, we need to be thinking Christians. We need to be thinking Christians. This whole series is just, my point has been proven by this lady that called me this week, that we need to be thinking Christians. That we need to think through the issues, that we need to ask tough questions. And so over the past few weeks, we've been talking about this stuff, and I've gotten these comments. Comments like, you know, this is one of the first times we've ever been told that it's okay to ask tough questions. You know, when I grew up, uh, we weren't allowed to ask questions. I've had people say, you know, for the first time, I've asked other people why they believe what they believe. What a great question. When you're working with people or going to school with people, and they criticize you for your faith, and they have a system of, of things that they believe, the question to throw right back at them is, well, why do you believe what you believe? Because if you're basing your whole eternity on that, you better be sure about why you believe it. And so people are beginning to ask these questions. People are starting to have some discussions around the dinner table. Uh, Melissa and I and Faith had one of the most powerful discussions we've had in a long time. Last week, after church, in our kitchen, waiting on lunch to get ready, just talking about the stuff that we talked about last Sunday and asking those tough questions.